Hey, welcome to Flight Test, I'm Josh, and today we're going to be showing you how to make the Power Pod for the Mighty Mini Series. Now, if you're familiar with our current swappable series, you're, this is going to look very familiar to you. The Mini Series is just like the bigger series. We are going to have a Power Pod, but this Power Pod is generally something that just enables you to put your motor and your speed control all in one location. It will be able to interchange with all the other lines, so you're going to want to build that first. Every kit's going to include the materials that you're going to need for your Power Pod, and that's simply going to be a little miniature firewall and a piece of foam like this. Now just like all of our other models, this is going to be an A-fold. The first thing we're going to do is remove the foam from these cavities on both sides. Now as you can see, this is an A-fold. A-fold means above. So before when you fold this, the side cheek is going to go above the bottom plate. Once we get the excess foam removed, you should have two cavities here. Make sure these cavities are as clean as possible so the folds are very clean and true. Now using the table as your friend, simply apply the glue to the surface that's going to be mainly glued. You don't want to be putting against the paper. And with the side cheek down on the table, roll your bottom plate up to meet it and push against the table nice and firm. This will give you a nice clean edge. Repeat the exact same process on the other side. Once your side cheeks on your power pod are glued together, you're gonna notice that there's an angle difference. That this angle here is not perpendicular to the side cheeks, it's actually in an angle. And that's because with smaller airplanes, thrust angle is even more important. On our bigger planes, all our power pods were perpendicular. This you're gonna wanna take careful note to put it on the right side. On future designs, if we don't need any thrust angle, I'll specify to put it on the perpendicular side. But in this case, we're gonna wanna go right to where the A is pointing. This is the front of the plane. We're gonna go ahead and take our firewall, and you're gonna see that this firewall is just like our old one, but with a couple differences. There's a notch up here. That's because oftentimes with mini uh, setups, you don't wanna have bulky connectors that pass through this hole here. So we got a notch here so the wires can run up and over, and you don't have to worry about lacing anything through. To install this, simply place your glue on the top edge once again, we're working at the side of the angled front portion, not the perpendicular. And I'm going to go ahead and set this down. Now, I know the orientation of my motor. When I screw this in, the wires are going to pass to the upper right. So I'm going to go ahead and put it down in that orientation. Every motor pops out in a different area. Always check out and see where it bolts up to. So when you bolt your motor, the wires can simply pass through and it's not going up and around. We're going to set that on, let it dry for a second, and then wipe off the excess. You're going to see a lot more glue removal through this process because we don't want that extra weight. We want to keep this as light and simple as possible. Just like our bigger power pods, we're going to go ahead and use tape as a main reinforcement tool. The tape is what's going to hold your firewall on much more than the glue. So don't neglect this step. Just like we're gift wrapping a package, we're going to go ahead and fold in the edges. Let that one open. Fold on the first side. Fold on the second side and then bring this right around the bottom. Now just for a little added strength, I'm going to go ahead and do it one more time. Put it on the bottom face. Now at this point, this firewall is going to go nowhere. And one thing you may notice a difference on here is there's no holes. In previous power pods we had holes. Because there's so many different motor options that you can run on these planes, we want to go ahead and let you move this power pod where it needs to be and then use a fuselage reference holes to give you your holes there, which means this power pod is basically a one or two airframe power pod. You're not going to be able to pop this from multiple different airframes unless you reinforce this and have multiple different holes. That's completely up to you, but the nice thing about this is it just gives you a simple component you can screw this onto. So at this point, we got to go ahead and open up these holes that we just sealed off with our tape. The most important holes we're going to need to worry about are the screw holes and the center hole for where the prop shaft pops through ever so slightly. Now for this build, the electronics set we're going to use is a 250 size motor, and this one actually is electronics pack bought from Laser Toys. Laser Toys and uh, Altitude Hobbies are carrying our electronics pack now, so go ahead and check out the links below and you can get all your electronics in one click. In most motors, your hardware will come with it. They even give you an Allen wrench with this Emax motor, but to make it a little bit easier, I'm just going to go ahead and use one of our longer screws here. I'm simply going to stick this through, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and use Loctite at this point. I'm going to go ahead and just line up these screws. It's very important not to tighten this down, but let it wiggle just a little bit so the other screw can line up even easier. Get the other one, move this around until it lines up. Make sure you take your time. If it's hard to turn, that means you're cross-threading it, and you don't want to do that. Metal shavings will get in your windings and in your magnets and ruin the motor. It's important that you don't select too long of a screw. Pick out the right size screw because you don't want to drive the screw into your windings. I really like these little Emax motors. They're very efficient, very economical, but they also give you lots of different options for your screws. All right, now that our motor's in, we're ready to go on to our next step. Now you can see that this has been pre-soldered. 
The reason we pre-soldered this is because we want to keep this airframe as light as possible and we don't plan on going to any tra uh, pusher configurations. Even, even if we did, we would simply go ahead and just put a different style prop on it, go from standard tractor to reverse. But in this case, we went ahead and checked our uh, direction. If you're wondering how to do that, we have a little video link down below that'll show you how to solder and how to hook up your electronics. Go ahead and watch that video now.